All right, welcome to Mod 1, Lesson 3. Remember, we still need our table of contents. Remember, I'm using the pages that would be in my notebook. So you'll have to sit there and put the correct pages for yours so you can find it. For today's lesson in three, we're going to be write and interpret numerical expressions and compare expressions using a visual model. Okay? Now, today's standard is MBT 1-2. We've been doing 1-1 for the last two lessons, but now we're doing 1-2. And it's explain patterns in the number of zeros of the product when multiplying a number by powers of 10. And explain patterns in the placement of the decimal point where decimal is multiplied or divided by a power of 10. Use whole number exponents to note powers of 10. So we're going to be using exponents today, and I'm going to get into that definition of exponents here in a second. Lesson objective. Use exponents to name place value units and explain patterns in the placement of the decimal point. And our essential question, how can I use exponents to represent numbers? Now the definition of exponents. Exponents represent the number of times a base number is multiplied. So we're going to see such in this one right here. If I have 10, okay. 10 times 1 would equal 10. So this here would actually be 10 to the first power. Okay. Now this 1 up here, which is called a sub superscript, is an exponent. Now the next one, I've got 10 times 10. And 100 equals 10 by 10. And this would be 10 to the second power. So let's continue on. If I had 1,000, we know this is 10 times 10, which is 100, times 10, which is 1,000. So we would write this one as 10 to the third power. Now, if you notice when I said the definition of it, it says how many times you multiply the base number by itself. Here, I'm multiplying 10 by itself three times. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. So now let's go to 10,000. Well, this is going to be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That should have been times, not a plus. So, because we know 10 times 10 is 100, 100 times 10 is 1,000, 1,000 times 10 would be 10,000. So 10,000 would equal 10 to the fourth. Our next one, 100,000. Now, obviously, we're going to multiply this one. That's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So this is going to be what? 10 to the fifth power. And the last one we're going to do is 1 million. Anyone think they know what this one's going to be? We know we're going to be multiplying 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, times 10 is 10,000, times 10 is 100,000, times 10 is 1 million. So that was 10 to the sixth power. So, these are exponents. They're going to help us for writing very large and very small numbers. Now, a lot of people always want to know, well, what does 10 to the 0 power mean then? Well, that's a very special one. 10, let me write it down here. 10 to the 0 power is actually equal to 1. Okay? All right. So let's see how we can apply this now. Here I have 10 to the fifth power. If I wanted to solve what 10 to the fifth power was, I know I'm going to multiply 10 by itself five times. So there's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's five of them. And I know 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 will give me 1,000. Now I'm going to bring this one down, times 10, which will give me 
10,000. Now I got to bring the last 10 down times 10, which gives me 100,000. Hmm. So that's a very easy way to write 100,000. We're just saying 10 to the fifth power. Now, notice this is an example we just did. And I'm just putting it in the notes, same way you did it before. Now, question is, anyone see a pattern there? I hope so. Because when it said 10 to the fifth power, how many zeros did we have to add to it? Five. Hmm. Interesting. So when we did 10 to the first power, 10 to the second power, which was 100, we had two zeros in it. 10 to the third power, which is equal to 1,000, we had three zeros. 10 to the fourth power, which was 10,000, we had four zeros. Ah, I hope you all are seeing that connection. Whatever the exponent is, that's how many zeros you're going to have in your number, how many place values that decimal has to move. Okay? That's going to be critical here in a couple minutes. All right, so let's continue on. Now we have 3 times 10 to the second power. So this is actually 3 times. We know 10 to the second is 10 times 10, which is 100. So we know 3 times 100 is 3. So 3 times 10 to the second is 300. Now I've noticed like what we were just talking about. 10 to the second. How many zeros were in my answer? Mm, coincidence. Let's take this one. 3 and 4 tenths times 10 to the third. So we got 3 and 4 tenths times 10 to the third, which is 10 times 10 times 10. And we know 10 times 10 is 100 times 10, which equals 1,000. So if you notice, we're right back to the same problems we did before. We know it's going to get larger. So I'm going to go ahead and write 3.4 here. We know this is going to get larger because we're multiplying by a whole number. And it's going to get larger by three place values. And when it gets larger, my digits have to shift to the left. So I'm going one, two, three place values. And that's where my new decimal point is. You notice these values. Those are place values. So now we know that three and four tenths times ten to the third equals three thousand four hundred. Let's see what happens when we're dividing. Well, first off, we know this is 700 divided by, we know 10 to the second power is 10 times 10. So I'm just going to rewrite it as 100. Now, I know that in the original number, since it's a whole number, my decimal is right here. I'm dividing by a whole number. So I know my answer will get smaller. And it's two place values. So I know my digits are going to move to the left. So my decimal point is, excuse me, my, de my, my digits are going to have to move to the right to get smaller. So my decimal will move to the left. So now we know that 700 divided by 10 to the second is equal to 7. All right, now instead of just a whole number, we have the decimal, but it doesn't matter. We still have 7.1 divided by 10 to the second, which is equal to 10 times 10. So we know this is 7 and 1 tenths divided by 100. It's going to get smaller since we're dividing by a whole number. In order to get smaller, the digits have to go to the right. That means my decimal is going to go to the left. 
So I'm going to go ahead and mark this with blue. And I know it's going by two place values. So it's going to get smaller. So we go one, two. And now we know that 7 and 1 tenths divided by 10 to the second equals 71 thousandths. All right, so let's take a look at this. This is a pattern. Now, if you notice, we have 43 thousandths, 4 and 3 tenths, 430. So what is happening here? Compare these numbers. Where is a decimal compared to in the first number? Well, as you can see, it appears the decimal has went one, two place values. So let's see if that pattern. So this one here, the decimal went this way, two place values. Now between four and three tenths and 430, it also went to the right, actually, two place values. The digits are going to the left. The decimal is going to the right. So if we keep adding this, and I know that it's going to place values, I know the next one should be 43,000. If I continue this pattern, adding two more place values, I now have 4,300,000. And if I continue it one more, we would have 430 million. Okay, so wrap up. What is an exponent? How can exponents be useful in representing numbers? An exponent tells you how many times a base number is multiplied by itself. In our examples here, it was base 10. It was 10 was our base number. So we were having to multiply it by itself in order to see the value of the number with the exponent. Now, let's see how we can apply this. Have you ever looked up in the sky and wondered how many stars were actually in the sky? Well, there are actually 10 to the 24th power stars in the observable sky. So if you go at night and if you're in a real dark place, you look around, you'll be able to see 10 to 24th power stars. Well, what is 10 to the 24th power stars? Wow, that's a big number. Okay. How do you read that number? Well, easiest way to read it is this is one billion trillion stars. Now, that's a big number. Now, which is easier to work with or talk about? One billion trillion stars or 10 to the 24th power stars? This is used a lot in science. This is also known as scientific notation, okay? Now that was a large number. What about a smaller number? Okay, this person here is measuring the thickness of a piece of paper. You ever thought about how thick a piece of paper is? Well, you can't measure it with a ruler, so he's measuring with what's called a caliper, okay? Now, if you were to measure the thickness of a piece of paper, that would be 39 ten thousandths of an inch. That's pretty small. And that's a hard measurement to work with. But with scientific notation or exponents, we could represent that number by three and nine tenths divided by 10 to the third. Because if I divided three and nine tenths by 10 to the third, I know it's gonna get smaller and the decimal would shift to the left three positions. But now we're actually working with a mixed number. I could take it one step further and say 39 divided by 10 to the fourth. All I did was shift the decimal again. Hmm. So fun fact, we talked about the observable universe. Did you know that if you folded a piece of paper 103 times, it would be as wide as the observable universe? That's awesome. Just think about that. Maybe you ought to try that sometime. 
See if you can fold a piece of paper 103 times. Hmm, maybe you have to come up and tell me what you found out, okay? All right, so that's it for today's lesson. Remember that you have to go back, answer the essential question, copy at least two notes, two models into your notes, and then submit your notes so I can take a look at them. You are able to go to your notebook now. Once you, once you annotate the notes, you'll be able to go to your notebook and you could print them out from there. Okay? All right. We'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye-bye.